Hey there everybody, I'm Mark Crowley, I'm back with another How to Draw video. Um, just quickly want to say for those of you who watched my last video, this is not the big ambitious video that I had been talking about. That one's taking a little longer than I thought, but rather than keep you all waiting, I thought I'd do another quick video today. Uh, and we'll finish that other video soon. Uh, this is a sort of sequel, uh, or another in an ongoing series on how to draw claws. Um, let me begin by just uh, putting in some rough lines to to indicate where uh, things are going to go. Um, I've drawn the the head and just a little bit of the hand down here um, to get my uh, stuff out of the way that has nothing to do with clothes, and um, that will free me up to spend the rest of this video f uh, focusing on what she's she's wearing. Uh, I've just I've decided to have her wearing a kind of. Uh, um, a kind of a jacket uh, that's uh, that's open around her uh, neck and uh, she's also going to be wearing a scarf on the inside here. You'll see as I get to this stuff uh, and go along. But let me try to talk a little bit about um, about drawing clothes and where the wrinkles go and things like that. Um, I think one thing that we can focus on initially maybe is on this arm here and uh, yeah, let me just draw this line in here first to begin with. Uh, this sleeve here, there, you're going to find wrinkles in three basic spots. And uh, down here what I've done is taken the, the, the cuff and uh, had it sort of folded back. Um, and so let me just sort of finish doing that. And then I can talk a little bit about wrinkles because I think when people... Uh, uh, want me to do a, a, a video on clothes, the main thing that they are having trouble with is drawing the wrinkles and figuring out where they go. So let's have a look at this one sleeve here and I'll show you where I uh, end up putting the wrinkles basically in three different spots. Uh, a little bit near the top, um, quite a bit near the middle near the elbow, and then just a touch down here as well. Um, all of this comes from observation of, of real clothing and uh, where wrinkles tend to occur in real clothing. You can get some ideas by doing studies, uh, which I often say, uh, or uh, looking at reference um, for something like this. This is almost like a fashion model pose, so you could uh, just look in fashion magazines or something to uh, do drawings. Wrinkles end up. I think over time you end up with a sense of where they go. Um, there tend to be uh, at least a few wrinkles near the top where the sleeve meets the uh, shoulder. And uh, so I'm going to put like one over here where the cloth is just sort of bunching up a little and maybe one more uh, just to indicate that spot. And then as I get into this area here, it may be helpful if I zoom in. So let me go ahead and stop and, uh, and zoom in to, to work on that one particular spot. All right, so we've zoomed in here, and um, I have a feeling that the wrinkles in this particular pose would sort of be moving in this direction across the arm. So watch how I do this. Uh, I'm going to start with a line up here that does not go all the way across. It sort of starts in the middle and comes across here. That's beginning to indicate one uh, wrinkle coming across the cloth. Um, I'm going to make another line just tucking in here a little bit, sort of creating a second wrinkle. And look at this line, uh, it's sort of like a hook. Watch what happens here, and it kind of starts down here and hooks back. This kind of line, maybe just a sort of a sharp hook back, this kind of line can be useful in drawing wrinkles. Um, just placed in the right spot at the right point. I'm going to add one more line down here. Um, it really can convey the feeling of a wrinkle. And uh, the, there's the sense that maybe this line is connecting with this line, but you leave a blank gap in there, and that uh, helps create a kind of a graceful cloth-like look. Um, let me pull back again, and uh, we'll see how this is working as part of the larger picture. 
All right, so you can see the effect uh, that was created here by uh, by adding those lines the way I did. Um, without zooming in, I'm just going to add a couple more lines down here. I try to watch myself. I know some people are saying, you know, because now that I'm a partner with YouTube, I can. It's possible for me to make half-hour videos if I wanted to. And I have heard one or two people saying, you know, geez, these videos are too long. Um, so I want to watch it uh, with uh, describing each and every line that I make. Um, maybe just uh, pick and choose a few of them that uh, that can be sort of symbolic of all the different lines that I'm making throughout the drawing. So uh, I'm just finishing up. Uh, she's wearing a kind of light sweater underneath this jacket. Um, and so that's coming down here all the way around her wrist. You'll see this a lot, I think, in manga drawings. There's something sort of attractive about uh, a long uh, sweater or shirt that comes all the way down past the rest, uh, almost down to the base of the thumb um, for female and sometimes male characters will have that kind of a uh, that kind of a look, so you can sort of experiment with that. Let me get back into drawing uh, some rough lines uh, just to make sure that I know where I'm going with this, which would be helpful. Uh, <laughs> This is one of these short jackets that uh, that where the sleeve is considerably longer than the the base of the jacket itself. Um, again, sort of, there's going to be a sort of a fashion model feeling about this pose. And if you don't like this kind of thing, then uh, maybe this is not the video for you. But uh, what I want to do is do sort of a a female character uh, pose for this one, and then uh, um, do a male character. Uh, pose for the for the next video, maybe switch back and forth. I think drawing clothes is the kind of thing where you I just need a whole series of videos. I'm drawing. A, I'm just gonna indicate a scarf here that's coming up, uh, almost passing in front of her face a little bit. Um, see if I can just sort of block in some lines of where that's gonna go. Um, I've said this before in videos that I that I'm. I have a sort of a conflict here with the way r my rough lines are drawn and the degree to which they show up on uh, video. Um, the truth is when you draw rough lines like this, you don't tend to draw them very dark. And um, But if I do it that the way I really would normally, then I end up with lines that no one can see. So I'm trying to do rough lines that are quite a bit darker than what I would normally do. Um, let's go ahead and indicate her uh, jeans down here. And this is, in a minute, I'm going to come down here and really zoom in and talk a bit about the all of the wrinkles that occur around the hips at the base of the je <coughs> blue jeans, excuse me, uh, in a pose like this when someone's sitting down, which is what she's doing. And that can, there's going to be a whole bunch of wrinkles down there that we can learn something from. Um, her jacket is open. And it's kind of uh, coming out on this side. Hope that line is showing up. I'll, I'll maybe it li I should zoom in a little more um, just to make sure that this is showing up to some degree. All right, so I've zoomed in here to uh, sort of the jeans, blue jeans area, and I'm going to continue doing just a little more rough lines before going into uh, final lines in this area. Um, the blue jeans. And even when someone is standing up, you tend to get a lot of wrinkles right around the waist here. And so this is a good place to maybe uh, focus on this and, and uh, talk about where the lines go. Um, one thing, well, let me just go ahead and get this jacket line. Whoops. Delineated, and that'll separate this out. Um, one thing you can begin doing uh, with a pose like this is indicating where the sort of waist uh, uh, of the jeans comes in, just sort of like a band going across. And right here uh, I'm going to put in uh, the pocket, an indication of the pocket. And one thing that you can do to help indicate the pocket is have some sort of lines coming out from inside the uh, pocket. And then on the other side of, the, uh, of this line where the pocket is, these wrinkles are coming in a different spot, and that helps to show that these are two different pieces of cloth. Um, over here, I'll just put in a sort of a button. And as you come down here with the, the zipper, these two lines that are on either side of the zipper uh, can work together um, 
uh, moving back and forth to to suggest that area. So, the, so I've got the two lines here, and then I move them in, and then I move them in one more time, and uh, that's a little trick for for uh, suggesting uh, that area and the way the the way these things are, are are sort of wrinkling up and over, up and over. Uh, coming down here, I notice uh, I rarely ever have a line go all the way across. Generally, I'm allowing lines to stop in the middle of white space. Like right here, I'll have another one say come out here, like that. And I'm, I, I may hook this one around. Remember, in the other one around the elbow, we had it hook back. That kind of thing can help to to suggest uh, wrinkles, especially in an area, sort of tight area here where uh, where the lines are really bunching up. Now on my other video uh, on how to draw clothes, I did too far and uh, drawing too many wrinkles and that really is a danger. Uh, so you're going to see me with this video being careful not to go too far and I do believe that uh, it's time to stop with bunching up the wrinkles uh, in this area. Um, but one last thing you can do uh, with jeans is put this sort of hem over here, a sort of line going across the thigh and uh, again not to overdo it but maybe two or three little lines coming off here can help suggest uh, wrinkles coming off of that hem and help to to give a feeling of the uh, the form of the thigh of the leg let me pull back and work on other sections of the drawing um, maybe this time talking a little less about what I'm doing uh, so as to keep the the length of this video under control all right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and put in this collar here. Um, kind of a roughly triangular shape. Notice how I like to sometimes add a second line that indicates uh, stitching or something like that. Uh, uh, all of these things are little tricks for um, conveying the cloth and, and the direction it's heading in and just uh, making these lines appear to be more than just lines, but uh, sheets of cloth folding over. Whoops. People do tell me that they've uh, tried buying these black Prisma colors and they're like, they keep snapping and breaking. Yes, tell me about it. Um, I want to do a video in a way that, that emphasizes that it's not so much the materials you choose um, I think sometimes people get a little fixated on, uh, oh, I gotta go buy these certain art materials. Um, kind of like it all has to do with what you buy. Uh, and there, you know, to a certain extent, if you're using materials that you feel like you're fighting against, um, that can be true, but so much of it, it has so much more to do with your eyes uh, and the degree to which you've practiced than it does with some sort of magical type of drawing material. So I'm indicating the buttons. Notice how I've created this effect of the cloth folding over here. Uh, again, this is the kind of thing you, you learn by looking at reference. And the buttons, by following along there and kind of looping back, uh, it all can help to convey um, a, a sense of three-dimensionality. Three uh, without talking about it too much, I am going to quickly indicate this uh, scarf area um, giving this kind of a slightly winter-like feel. A scarf, uh, a, a scarf can be a lot of fun in a drawing because uh, you have this chance to add a pattern to it. I guess that's true of anything, but uh, I think especially with uh, scarves, it's uh, adding in, like I'm just putting a series of X's here with a, a line holding them together. Some loose little very simple thing like this. I mean, you know, come on, anyone can draw X's. Uh, anything like, something like this can be surprisingly effective in uh, conveying the sense of uh, of a pattern. Uh, I've got the pattern right here and I'm drawing the, the um, uh, scarf behind it. I'm going to make sure that the, the pattern doesn't match too neatly up uh, connecting with the uh, pattern on the other end of it because that would, that sort of will fight against the idea of this passing in front of it. So that's uh, something you can keep in mind when you're when you've got a patterned piece of cloth that's one folding on top of the other, make sure the pattern doesn't meet too neatly 
uh, or sort of cross across the two different pieces of cloth, it defeats the three dimensionality and it becomes confusing. Uh, I'm gonna I'm adding just a little bit of a uh, a, f a lacy fringe here at the bottom of her uh, sweater that she's got underneath here. Um, and just to add a little more detail, it's all about little extra details sometimes, I'm going to add the, uh, the button holes over on this uh, side of the jean jacket. And again, I'm pretty much done at this point. I think to, to speed things along in time lapse, I'm going to add just a little bit of shading and then come back to talk about uh, the drawing in general. All right, well, there you have it, the finished drawing. I uh, hope you found this video useful. Um, and if you were hoping to find one for drawing uh, men's clothes, just uh, uh, keep your eyes out for that in the weeks uh, ahead. Um, thanks so much for watching these videos, for subscribing, for all your messages and support. A special thanks to anyone who has uh, got my manga series, Miki Falls. I've been hearing from more and more people who've gone out to get it or uh, had it special ordered from their local store or got it off Amazon. I heard a message uh, from someone uh, in Norway the other day who had gone to their local store to have it special ordered and the guy working at the store said in Norwegian presumably, oh yes we've been getting a lot of uh, interest in that series lately and I was just amazed. Wow, people in Norway uh, asking about my series. So let's just dedicate this video to my good friends in Norway. Hats off to all of you. I do appreciate your support. Uh, so let's go ahead and end this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was useful for you, and I will be back with another one real soon.